Torch enthusiasts. Now today I'm going to be returning to a rather dark era of the world, um, which is the, the Second World War, um, to discuss the Flieger Watch, and the history of this watch, the design, and, uh, and the reason for its creation. Um, because I've been asked by various people to, to create a video of this nature um, in the series um, of, um, uh, of, 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 of my, my discussions about vintage watches. I'll also talk about some, some modern alternatives which, um, uh, which really do hark back to these days in various price categories and the versions which I think are the most interesting and, and, uh, and well made. Now to provide some context to this video, in 1933, following his exit from the, uh, the League of Nations Disarmament Conference, um, Adolf Hitler, who was at, the, at that point at the helm of Germany, chose to pursue rearmament um, on a large scale um, in order to, to break the Treaty of Versailles and, uh, and go on to, to war, though of course this was unknown to, to his own people at this particular point. But uh, with uh, Goering, uh, one of his, uh, his ministers, um, running his four-year plan, if you will, the Luftwaffe was formed, which was the, the, the German Air Force, or the recreated German Air Force. And for this Air Force in 1935, um, new watches were commissioned specifically for navigators and pilots to be able to synchronise their watches um, with the universal naval time and, uh, and be able to conduct missions, um, especially bombings, using the, this, these timing instruments. Now originally the watch was intended to be very similar to the angle measuring watches for navigation that were produced, um, for instance, by Longines for, uh, for Lindbergh when he crossed the Atlantic. But, uh, but in truth, um, this didn't seem very practical, uh, despite the fact that Longines have, uh, have re reproduced this watch in small numbers this year. Um, this didn't seem practical due to the limited um, uh, amount of, uh, of luminescence on the dial, and also due to the fact that, uh, they, that they were deemed as too complicated for a pilot in the heat of combat to, to read, um, or a navigator to be able to see in the shaking um, and uh, um, a rather uh, a overheated cockpit of, uh, of a, a bomber in the case of, of a, a bombing raid. So as a result, a much more simple design was taken um, at a much larger size as well. Now the final specification released to manufacturers to produce this watch was that it had to be 55mm in diameter to be large enough to be legible um, over the top um, of, of a leather jacket uh, worn by a pilot um, over the sleeve, and of course the strap had to be particularly designed to go over the sleeve as well. Similarly, these straps were designed specifically in a sort of a, a precursor to a NATO strap, if you will, that the, the buckle would be would sit within a loop of leather, so even if the, the buckle were to come, um, come undone, the watch would simply hang from its strap rather than being uh, attached tightly around the wrist. And of course this was the, the, the precursor to straps such as the NATO strap or the Zulu strap, designed to avoid the loss of a watch in the case of, of detachment, though in this case not from the, the lugs, but rather from the... Um, uh, for, from the, the buckle end of of the, of this, of course, this makes sense though when the straps were actually riveted around the the, the 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 bars between the lugs. So there really was very little danger of loss in that respect. Now, continuing with the style of the case, these had to feature a soft iron core around the inside of the, the case and dial, which was of course crucial for pilots who were going through um, uh, large magnetic fields to stop the watches from from um, from being magnetized and. Uh, and therefore damaging their timekeeping quite substantially by affecting the springs. Um, so therefore they did have this, uh, this soft iron core on the inside, which protected them um, in a very similar way to, for example, a Rolex Milgauss um, from external um, uh, magnetic fields, um, which, uh, w w which of course is crucial and is something which has become really a staple of pilots' watches to this day. Now the watch has also featured a case back which showed the serial number, the type of watch, the movement, the order number, and in fact, quite crucially, the manufacturer because five different companies ended up making these watches, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Also, the watches had to have a large onion crown, which could be manipulated while wearing gloves uh, in the cockpit, um, and also the watches were hacking, um, which was quite, quite essential, apart from the fact they were manually wound watches. Um, but they were hacking because they were synchronised in the cockpit um, using a, a radio signal, so they were given a sort of a beep, to which they synchronised their watches so that their watches were synchronised to the universal naval time. Um, so that they could really tell where they stood in terms of their uh, their position um, in, uh, in space and, uh, and time. Now there are two styles of dial um, involved with these watches, but while all feature these, um, uh, these, blue, these thermally blued hands, their proportions are very different depending on the model. So the A-style dials, which were more commonly worn by pilots or associated with pilots, have uh, simply the, uh, the, the hour markings around the edge of the dial, um, and uh, have similarly lengthed hands, though of course they are still different lengths to make them clearly legible. 
The B style dials are designed specifically for navigators and have the, the 12 hour uh, graduations around the center of the dial and a shorter loomed uh, lozenge shaped um, hour hand to, to point specifically to that dial while having a much longer uh, minute hand to point to the edge of the dial and uh, a white painted um, second hand to, to give a clear indication of the, the exact time. Now these watches were exclusively made for the German government and, uh, and Air Force, so they weren't sold to individuals, they were handed out to pilots before a flight and returned after the flight. And this is why they're so expensive these days, really, um, due to the, the fact that, uh, that they're so rare and also many were destroyed in, in combat. Similarly, these watches um, are, are fundamentally difficult to get hold of due to the fact that a lot of them were lost um, with, the, with the German government, um, rather than being uh, handed out and sold as individual pieces. So as a result, the prices for these watches range, depending on the company and uh, condition, between just shy of £10,000 and £30,000 um, per watch, which is, is a very large amount of money, but uh, certainly these are very historical pieces. Now, five companies made these watches for the, the German Air Force, um, although four are the main versions, with IWC being the fifth, who only made a few. Um, they didn't produce quite as many as the other companies, um, which, uh, which is why actually the IWC ones are often extremely valuable and difficult to get hold of. But the, uh, the companies that made them were Larco, Stover, uh, Wemper, and Elanger and Zona. And the reason um, for this is they were uh, companies with the, the, the suitable capacity and ability to make watches of this type in the era, um, with luminescence on the dials and so on. Um, and uh, the movements used um, were, uh, were, were, were quite varied between the various models, so Stover used Unitas movements, uh, Vemper used uh, Tommen movements, and Larco and Elang and Zona used their own in-house movements um, for these watches, all of which were manually wound um, because it seemed like the most practical version for the time, um, while uh, mechanical um, automatic movements hadn't been perfect perfected at this time, so really manual movements were the only option, and especially with those very large crowns, um, they could be wound extremely quickly. Um, uh, due to the, the, the purchase you get as a result of the gearing up with those crowns. Now one interesting quirk about the IWC line of pilots' watches is that while producing watches for the Luftwaffe in this larger 55mm size, they also made much smaller models for the Allies um, in their cockpits, which really does show the variation in models used. Now due to their incredible legibility and their historical value, these Fliegers have become truly iconic in the world of pilots' watches, and I must say they have a very, very particular aesthetic, um, that really is about as close to a tool design as you can really get, um, and really is on par in terms of, uh, of uh, toolishness, if you will, um, as something like an original Blancpain 50 Fathoms or a Doxa Sub. Um, so I would like to talk about some modern alternatives which both hark back to the original, while staying very true to the original um, in terms of purpose and functionality. Now the first reproductions which I'd like to talk about are made by Larco, which is of course one of the companies that originally produced these. Um, and these are their, their Flieger original models. And these models start at around the 900 euro mark and uh, go up to about 1400 for the, um, uh, the larger 45mm size. Or if you really want to go for the original, around the 3000 euro mark for the, um, the, the largest 55mm model. Though most of their models are far, far less than this, less than uh, half the price of that model. But their standard versions come with uh, either ETA uh, or Unitas movements in the manually wound or automatic versions. But what's impressive about these watches is how true to the uh, the originals they are. They have the same uh, design of cylindrical cases with those those jutting out very short lugs, um, and the same onion crown. These also feature the original markings on the case back and the side of the case to denote the model and the, the version number. Similarly, the hands are also thermally blued with luminescent material in them, as well as the rest of the dial and the second hand, um, which makes these watches both very functional. Um, but also very true to the originals, which, uh, which is something which can't be said for most reproductions. Although this, this does make them slightly less practical than other versions in that they don't have the date, for instance. Um, and also um, the straps uh, do feature the original style, which is to say that they, um, they are reattached at their base, which means that uh, uh, the straps don't break into two pieces, but rather remain as one piece, um, which of course improves the um, security of the watch on the wrist. One thing to consider with these watches, though, is that the bead blasted case does look very utilitarian. Though that said, I think it's contrasted very nicely by those thermally blued hands um, on the front of this watch, um, which I think makes for a, a very traditional looking model, um, while, um, uh, while making it look uh, rather modern and, uh, and well designed uh, nonetheless. It's worth pointing out that also Larco do produce these watches in both the A and B dial configurations, depending on what you prefer, a more simple dial or a more complex one. Um, so there really is no, uh, no limit to the choice here um, in terms of what can be done.
Also, like I will uh, at a price, artificially age your watch, knock the loom out of the hands, age the dial with UV, and uh, and beat up the case a bit, um, which does add a certain charm to these watches. Though I personally would rather do it myself over the years um, and add some uh, some historical charm to the watches myself. Now, another alternative for someone who wants a more modern interpretation of the classic watch are Stover's models, and these are also German-made watches with ETA movements. Um, however, I believe customization here is really the key. These watches are available in 36, 40, and 43mm versions, but you can really specify a great deal of different things. You can specify different coloured hands, black or blue, um, in this case thermally blued, um, different bracelets and strap options, uh, various case engravings. You can even specify different movements um, and grades of movements and even the regulation of the movement, although waiting lists are very long for these watches. That said though, um, they do offer some, some interesting uh, developments on the older models. So, whereas the 36 and the 40mm versions feature similar proportions to the originals, although they are brushed rather than beat blasted to give a, a better luster and a, a more attractive finish. So these watches do step away from the traditional design of these watches, though they do keep the, the, the onion crowns, um, and also um, the, the general style of the dials with those blued hands and so on. But they do put their own spin on it with exhibition case backs, um, albeit with similar engravings on the rotor um, to the original case backs as a sort of a, um, a nod to previous generations of these watches. Um, but they do provide a much more modern interpretation for the individual who wants something a bit different. Also, they ca you can specify the date placed on the dial at 6 o'clock, which is again a, a very helpful feature, um, as well as being able to specify both A and B style dials. However, while the, the 36 and 40mm versions follow the, the original version uh, proportions, the 43mm versions are rather interesting, because they offer a much thicker bezel and 200 meters of water resistance, um, and a, an improved movement um, design and decoration, um, which does raise the price from about 930 euros to near the 1300 euros. But I feel this is a, a, a good trade-off in terms of, uh, of giving you a more functionally um, robust model to wear. Of course, it's worth remembering that Stover did originally produce these watches along with Larco for the Luftwaffe, so they really are, do, do, do have the history behind them um, to produce these models in a convincing way, whereas one often sees companies producing uh, replicas of these watches that weren't originally involved, and, and though they may make some, some truly wonderful looking pieces, it is nice to know that the company, um, it, this is very much in the company's history and isn't simply being made because they're popular, but rather because this means something to the company itself. Of course, the build quality of these watches is known for being legendary, um, and the, the quality of the finishing on each of the parts um, is known to be really superb. Um, so they do improve the um, the decoration of these watches substantially over the originals, um, which which many many purists do feel is uh, is too much. Um, but I must say, I, I think this is a nice balance between functionality and uh, and original um, and classic style. Of course, the final watch I have to talk about is the IWC Big Pilot which has become really an iconic piece um, since its, its inception, um, which, which of course uh, has been a watch which hasn't been produced by IWC in many, many years, but, uh, but certainly does feature the, the distinctive traits of the original model. Though it doesn't have the blued hands, it does have the onion crown and that particular shape of hands um, used on the A style of dial. Of course, this watch is more of a luxury piece, really, than a, um, a sports watch, but in terms of engineering going into it, it does have an in-house caliber with a seven-day power reserve, and with that power reserve indicator placed at the 3 o'clock position and the date at 6 o'clock to give a, a very symmetrical and uh, very attractive dial in my opinion. Of course, though perpetual calendar versions, annual calendar versions um, ha have been made, I do feel that the 5009, which is the current version, is, is the most true to the original with its black dial and very no-nonsense uh, um, uh, design, which means that it's extremely legible um, with that uh, very beautifully polished, uh, sorry, brushed case with polished bevels going around the case um, and a polished, a very slim bezel and crown. And of course it does have that large onion crown which is rare um, to see these days due to its size and at 46mm it is a large watch um, but I think certainly does work with its, uh, its heritage um, as such a, a, a large um, functional timepiece. Now of course it does have a, a wonderful level of finishing due to its very high price um, with a, um, a sub-dial which has that sunburst effect and a very, very well-finished well uh, matte rest of the dial. Uh, and similarly, the finishing all round is, is superb, as one would expect. Of course, the price for this watch, though, is pretty eye-watering at uh, just shy of £11,000, which really is a remarkable amount of money for a steel sports watch. Though certainly for the aficionado, this is uh, a wonderful timepiece. Um, I must say, I, I personally wouldn't be able to justify the expense over, over the products of, um, uh, of Stover and Larco.
Anyway, I'll end the video with this superb looking IWC, but thank you very much for watching and uh, please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more content on this channel. So thank you very much for watching, this is Simon the Watch Guy, over and out.